the Secretary General is in <coughs> Grand Montana uh, today in Switzerland to where he's chairing the conference on Cyprus. Earlier today, he spoke to reporters and said the reconvening of the conference offers a historic opportunity to reach a comprehensive settlement to the conflict that has divided Cyprus for far too many decades. He noted that the road back to Switzerland has not been easy, but the path to lasting peace never is. The Secretary General said that to get to this point, leaders have to overcome significant challenges and, mode, and make unprecedented progress. He saluted the common vision which has led them to this point. The Secretary General said he firmly believes that through determination and political will, it will be possible to clear the final hurdle and reach a comprehensive settlement. And you can read the full transcript online. And on Sunday, the Deputy Secretary General will depart to New York for Addis Ababa to participate in the 29th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of the African Union, which will take place on July 3rd and 4th under the theme, Harnessing the Democratic Dividend Through Investment in Youth. Ms. Mohammed will also have uh, bilateral meetings with senior uh, government officials of participating states, as well as heads of regional and sub-regional organizations on the margin of the assembly. She will be back in New York on July 5th. And this morning, the Security Council adopted the first ever resolution on mine action. The new resolution stresses the importance of considering mine action during the earliest stages of planning and programming in peacekeeping operations and special political missions, as well as in humanitarian responses. It recognizes the positive contribution of mine action to peace uh, sustainment and stabilization efforts. The Council also requested that the Secretary General provide information on threats posed by landmines, explosive remnants of war, and improves explo improvised explosive devices in an effort to mitigate these threats when reporting on peace operations and humanitarian response. The Council members also heard a briefing from Jean Arnaud, the head of the UN mission in Colombia. He said the completion of the laying down of individual weapons by the FARC-EP has created new opportunities. The mission and the FARC-EP, with support of the armed forces and the police, can now devote the full, their full attention to the disposal of hundreds of armed caches, the collection of weapons in them, and the destruction of explosives and unst unstable armaments. He added the UN was honored by the request of the government of Colombia and the FARC-EP to establish a second verification mission focused on reintegration and wider security guarantees and that to begin as soon as possible. Like the first mission, the second one will be as much about fostering cooperation and building confidence as it will be about verification, he said. And just to flag our, uh, uh, the um, Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, issued a number of statements, one on the situation in Venezuela and another one on the situation in Guatemala, and that is available on their website. Uh, they also expressed a extreme concern at the situation of civilians in Iraq, in uh, Mosul, in Iraq, where the fighting has become more intense in the big to retake the, the whole city from Daesh. The High Commissioner reminds all parties to the conflict that they must abide by the principles of humanity, distinction, proportionality, and precaution in carrying out um, operation, military operations. And for its part, UNICEF says that thousands of children continue to be trapped in relentless violence in the old city of Mosul. The head of the UNICEF office in Iraq, uh, Peter Hawkins, said that children stranded in the fighting are hiding in their basements while those who try to flee risk being shot. And uh, regarding Syria, the High, the High Commission for Refugees uh, said their, uh, their office said they're seeing notable trend in spontaneous returns to and within Syria in 2017. So far, aid agencies estimate that 440,000 internally displaced people have returned to their homes uh, during the first six weeks of uh, six months of this year. In parallel, UNHCR has monitored over 31,000 Syrian refugees returning from neighboring countries. Uh, in 2017. Since 2015, some 260,000 refugees have spontaneously returned to Syria, primarily from Turkey into northern Syria. Given these returns witnessed so far and in light of a progressively increased number of returns of internally displaced people and in time refugees, UNHCR has started scaling up its operational capacity within Syria. More detail from UNHCR. And just to note that yesterday in his briefing to the Security Council, Jeff Feltman, the head of the Political Affairs Department, said that two years after the conclusion of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action regarding Iran, 
the Secretary General said is immensely encouraged by the continued commitment by all participants to the agreement. And that was in public. And our friends at the UN Development Program announced this year's winner of the Equator Prize, which recognizes organizations and communities which showcase innovative solutions for tackling poverty, environment, and climate change. Among the winners are in a cooperative in Honduras that sells essential ingredients in the fragrance and flavor industry, an initiative promoting conflict resolution in Mali to protect an endangered African elephant, and a family homestay network in Indonesia, and an insurance scheme in Pakistan that protects the endangered snow leopard while paying farmers damages for livestock losses. The winners will be honored in a celebration in New York on 7, September 17th. And our friends at the World Meteorological Organization tell us that a UN-led initiative to improve early warning systems and increase resilience will be expanding to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Niger with two new projects. The initiative is also assessing progress in existing projects in Burkina Faso, Mali, and the Pacific, and is planning new ones in the Caribbean and Papua New Guinea. WMO said the ultimate goal is to mobilize more than $100 million by 2020 for early warning systems in least developed countries. And today is? Day. Exactly. Very good, Matthew. Okay. Uh, the day, oh, hold on. Oh, I'm not, no, it's not the contest yet. Uh, the day that, uh, the day that uh, seeks to raise the public awareness about the impact hazard of asteroids and inform the public about crisis communication actions to be taken at the global level in case of a credible near-Earth object threat. The day coincides with the anniversary of the Tungunska impact over Siberia 1908, which is the largest impact event recorded in history. And something we'd like to highlight and note that our former boss, the former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, has joined the elders, uh, and that was announced by the group uh, today, and we obviously congratulate him on that. And on Monday, we will not be present in terms of a live noon briefing. We'll post uh, updates online. The office will be staffed. But at 12.30, Ambassador Liu of China, uh, President of Security Council for the month of July, will be here in, pres in person to brief you on the Council's program of work. And today we thank our friends in the Lao People's Democratic Republic, paying their annual dues in full, which brings us up to... 110. All right, but Matthew won the asteroid, so we'll give him the first question. <laughs> All right, no. I'm, uh, All right, let's. You ask a question, then I'll take a, a complaint from Carol. Go ahead. All right, no, sure. I, I, I guess I wanted to. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that, that Myanmar has announced officially that they are not, they are mm -hmm. going to ban visas for the three uh, uh, UN in. Um, investigators and any of their subordinates. And so I'm wondering, combined with the, 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 the arrest of three journalists that were, you know, speaking to groups that now are themselves negotiating with the government, is it the time, to, as Secretary General, what does he think of this? this, this well, I think a, it's, a, we think it's, uh, it's obviously important uh, for every country to cooperate uh, with the UN's human rights mechanism, whether they be special rapporteurs or investigations put forward by the Human Rights Council. What communications has the Secretariat, either through its new or, or, or the existing resident coordinator or otherwise, had with the government given this open statement of... Uh, I, I'm, I'm not aware of anything that I'm able to share with you at this point. Carol. Stefan, about the peacekeeping budget, is the Secretary General concerned that the cuts that were approved by the General Assembly today are going to hurt the peacekeeping missions? And my complaint on that was that the documents that we've received by, well, the, the links to documents that we've received by email since yesterday are not working. So we haven't seen any of the documents that the General Assembly voted on today for peacekeeping. Okay, well, I will uh, note your complaint and check. Yes, I, that, that I will, uh, I will uh, agree with. Um, you know, obviously, uh, following the decision taken by, by the General Assembly on, uh, on the peacekeeping budget, we will now translate the approved uh, resource levels into activities to implement uh, the mandates given to us by the Security Council on the peacekeeping front. Uh, the overall level uh, is meaningfully, meaningfully smaller 
uh, than what we had last year, but we will make every effort uh, to ensure that uh, the mandates are implemented. Uh, we cannot overstate the value of peacekeeping to achieve peace and stability. It remains the most cost-effective instrument at the disposal of the international community to prevent conflicts and foster conditions for lasting peace. Edie? Uh, just to follow up, mm -hmm. um, since we can't open the links, yeah. um, it would be really helpful if someone from the GA or the Fifth Committee could actually put out a release on exactly what uh, the sure, sure, what they council were did, yeah. because there are a whole slew of okay. there are a whole slew of resolutions, yeah. and it's very difficult unless you've been eyeballing the fifth committee no, no, negotiation. I, 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 I completely agree with you. We'll we'll take a look at it as soon as I leave. Thank you. We'll move to the second row from uh, right to left. Thank you, uh, physically, oh. not politically. Yes. Huh? Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so far on this, uh, I'm sorry, uh, on, on the sad situation in Mosul, uh, do you have any, uh, uh, or the represent, your representative there have said, is it in fact the claims of the Iraqi government that they have in fact captured Nuri Mosque and the city, old city, is that correct? Uh, we're obviously watching uh, the situation, the, the military operations in Mosul. I, I'm not, at least from this podium, able to, to confirm one way or another. As you know, we are not on the front lines uh, with the military uh, authorities. We, we come in uh, soon after. Uh, fully supportive of the Iraqi uh, government, the Iraqi authorities, uh, as they try to rebuild, uh, rebuild the city. And of course, I think as Lise Grande has said a number of times, restore essential services, especially focusing on electricity and water. But I, I'm not able to, I'm not in business of confirming uh, military, uh, military gains. On this, on this I just w wanted to find out because things are getting bad because Mr. Trump again issued a very time I'm fed up and this is with uh, North Korea and I'm, I mean, threatening that basically that action will be taken. Does the United Nations know as to what threat level it is and how the North Koreans are going to respond when this happens? Uh, listen, uh, I I'm not going to analyze or I have no way of, of analyzing the, the statements made by, uh, by the president and I have no way of predicting uh, what the DPRK will do. Abdul Hamid. Thank you. I think Monday morning, uh, Stefan, this car, uh, armored car, hit a Palestinian car killing mother and four children. But there were controversial explanations if, if it was an accident or it was intentional. So can you uh, verify that with OCHA or with Mladino's office if it was intentional or it was just a well, pure I, I will, we'll accident? We'll check what they have, but obviously we would expect A mother and four we, we, children. We, we, we would expect killed. that uh, investigations are done, but I Thank will see you. what we have. Yes. Yeah, I, I just had a, a question about the uh, journal. It listed about the Palestinian forum and it said if you want to see the program look into the you know click on click yeah. and then you click and you get a bunch of things and it's very confusing and so it was hard to figure out where the program was and how to use once you click this is where which, you, which there's forum? a Palestinian yeah, yeah, yeah. forum that's happening right. so I'm wondering if there could be some uh, clarification about how this is you know the website and what they're sure, doing sure we can check with the okay uh, Carol on the OPCW mm -hmm. um, fact-finding mission confirming the use mm -hmm. of siren, d did you have any reaction to that? It now comes to the gym for an assessment. D any view on on uh, uh, how that? No, that I mean we've we, you know we've seen. Uh, I mean I've seen the public statements made by by some on a report that, as far as I know, has not been yet made public. I haven't seen uh, the report. Um, I think though this is to be confirmed by the President of the Security Council, we do expect Mr. Millet uh, 
uh, to brief, uh, as head of the gym, to brief the council uh, very soon. And so I think he will have more share on that. Mr. Lee. Sure. I wanted to ask you this, um, what was said going to be the reform, the reform of the development system of mm -hmm. the UN. Was, I thought it was going to be done in June, but finding it's now June 30th. So. Has, has a pro written proposal been made? Uh, the Secretary General will brief uh, the member states on Wednesday uh, in the morning. He will brief Ekwesak and outline his, um, his uh, vision for the reform of the UN's development system. And, now that and that will be a public meeting. Great. Now that he's in, he, you'd said yesterday that, you know, wait for him to get to, to, to Switzerland mm -hmm. before saying what his next moves are. What are his next moves between now and Wednesday? Uh, right now, he's focusing on the on the discussions in call in in call Montana. So I don't want to preempt uh, when he will leave uh, the discussions as they're still ongoing. Okay, and I wanted in the council there was the report on the the council's visit to, to Haiti, mm -hmm. and the issue of cholera came up. The ambassador you know, reported, I guess, what was heard inside the meeting. <coughs> Outside the meeting was things were were spicier still in terms of the UN, you know, not living up to what people believe was said. I've seen a picture of Jer Joseph Shear in briefing, at, I guess, at the Canadian mission. Is it possible in early J July to get her here okay. to describe what her work's going to be? And we can see, we to your, can see, we can see to your knowledge, has, has anything yet been been raised, no, or does to, she have a see, position to on see what we can, uh, individual we'll see, what, see what we can do. Abdul Hamid. Uh, sorry if I missed this, but this is a technical question. Was there any announcement to extending the job of the spokesman for another period of time? Was there any announcement? Every day for me is a victory. <laughs> Masood. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Stefan, I just want but I must have missed it. When is the uh, press conference of the uh, President of Security Council? Monday, third. the 3rd of July at 12.30. At 12.30? Yes, sir. Well, uh, you said it already. President of Security Council. Okay. okay, thank you. Goodbye.